Hey everyone, Lucas here for some street photography in Roppongi. This area is a bit of a nightlife kind of spot with lots of bars and clubs and things like that. In the daytime, it's also sort of a shopping commercial district. And to be honest, I haven't been here in quite a long time, probably over a year. So in a way, it's a bit new to me. I'm sure it has changed a lot since the last time I've been here. So I'm kind of excited to explore the area and see what kind of street photos I can get. Of course, if you like what you see on this channel, please be sure to like the video and subscribe. And also, any questions you might have about what we're doing tonight, feel free to leave some comments below, and I'll be sure to go through and answer them as best as I can. All right? So off we go to do some shooting. All right guys, so first, let me tell you a little bit of my settings, just uh, to get that out of the way. Now, I pretty much shoot on the same settings whenever I'm doing street photography, but just to recap, I'm on aperture mode with auto ISO, and my ISO is capped at 6400, and I have a minimum shutter speed of one over 250, even though it's nighttime, because I want to be able to freeze the action when necessary. And of course, because it's dark, the aperture I'm using is f2.8. And I like to use the pinpoint AF, but I'll switch to snap focus here and there as needed. Right. So that's the settings I'm going to use for tonight. All right, so we walk down the main street a little bit, and honestly, you know, I mean, it's cool, it's flashy, but I find that on these main streets, I don't usually get the best shots. I feel like, you know, when I follow my nose, my instinct tells me you got to go on the little side streets. So that's where we're going to go next. We're going to go off the main street and explore the little nooks and crannies, you know, off the beaten path. Right, we're going to go this way. Not bad, okay. So yeah, my instincts have paid off, right? This little scene here, I love this metallic shutter that reflects the light in an interesting way. And then there's a vending machine that somebody came to use. I was a little slow to get, the, get my exposure right. So the first shot is a little bit overexposed. And you can't see the details in the vending machine. Oh well, and then by the time I fixed the exposure, the guy had moved on, so I kind of missed the moment. But, you know, even the slightly overexposed one is really not bad. I think this is a, an, okay shot but it just goes to is a little reminder for me I talked about settings already but there's one important thing I forgot to do and that's to put my EV or exposure compensation a little bit minus I just find that in high contrast night scenes like this it's better to be a little bit underexposed than over but the idea is that the highlights you know the, the vending machine is very bright and these highlights I want to protect I don't mind if everything else is a little bit too dark because it'll overall look better I want to show that contrast because it's closer to how I perceive it with my own eyes I think everybody else does, although our human eyes have way more dynamic range than a camera does. But in any case, I can see the detail in the vending machine, so I want to be able to see that detail in the photo. I don't mind if I lose some shadow detail. And of course, shooting in RAW, I can always try to bring that up later. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. All right, let's get out of the road. But I like this building here and this staircase. It's pretty neat. Now, this is the kind of shot where 20 might be a little bit wide. The lens on the recoil might be a little wide, but it's, it should be fine. And also, now, I'm going to be shooting something very static, so I definitely don't need my usual minimum speed of 1 over 250. So I put it on TV and made my shutter speed 1 over 30 because the, you know, the IBIS in this camera is excellent, so I don't need to worry about camera shake for such a static shot. I could probably even get away with a slower one. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So 1 over 30. A really cool shot. I love the sky tonight. And I love how these staircases are illuminated. And that karaoke neon up there is really good. So I'm going to go even slower. I'm going to go, I'm going to try a tenth of a second to keep my ISO nice and low. So I get plenty of dynamic range. And when shooting really slow shutters, I, uh, I take a bunch because you never know. One of them might end up blurry just in case, but these seem to all be very sharp. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it also shows that, you know, you don't always want, like when I'm out shooting street photography, I don't want to lock my mentality into just, oh, it has to be street photography. I'm actually very open. And honestly, I kind of call myself an urban photographer rather than a street photographer because on the one hand, I am, my goal is to get candid street moments, you know, decisive moments. That is kind of the, the you know, the cream of the crop. That's what I really want to get. That's the ultimate goal. But along the way, I'm happy to shoot static urban scenes like this, you know, this more kind of, gritty cyberpunk style stuff and like this this really does it for me i really like this scene here it's quite cool 
let's keep going. Oh, here's something that I like. So I've always found it interesting that the, like, the terrain here is pretty cool. You can see it's like this steep hill. In general, Roppongi is a very hilly part of the city. And then there's this public restroom in the middle that's like this bunker. Looks like something from you know, World War II. And then the cafe in the background with a little restaurant. And so I think this, this has potential. Okay. Now here, this is where I, now I'm gonna be kind of in fisherman mode or hunting mode. So I'm gonna be waiting here for the, for the moment, right? In cases like this, I find it preferable to actually use snap focus. This is where I like to use snap focus because, you know, I know that's five meter, more than five meters away from me. So if I put it on the five meter snap, I don't have to focus each time. Line it up again, see if I can try a different composition. Ooh, here we go. Actually, I realize a portrait is better. Then I don't have to get so close. Because with the portrait version, I get the stripes in the foreground. There we go. That's not bad. Shows that you gotta be patient, you gotta work the scene, try stuff. Every car is hesitating because they think I'm gonna cross. <laughs> there we go. I want someone now perfectly in the sweet spot. Then it gets to the point where you don't want to be, in my opinion, it's easy to be, not complacent, that's the wrong word, but sort of like easily satisfied, like, oh, that's good enough. At this point, now that I really like my frame with the stripes in the foreground, I really want to make sure I get a good subject and the right timing. So all these people that just went by, they turned to cross and they came towards me, and I don't want that. I want them to go straight across so that I get them perfectly from the side. And I'm, and I'm also thinking the text on top is not needed. Here we go. Nice. That was pretty good. But yeah, I think that one is the best one I'm going to get. Quite happy with that. So here's one of these kind of esoteric subjects that, honestly, I don't expect other people to like necessarily, but it's something that I like. Uh, I tend to photograph a lot of them. And that is electrical poles. There's tons of or utility poles in Japan with, you know, uh, wires and all this stuff. And this one has this amazing background of the staircase with all the machinery on it. And it's lit with this subtle red light coming from a big neon sign around the corner. So again, just like the shot earlier, I like to keep the shutter really slow here. I'm on a 10th of a second, F2.8, and then auto ISO, which the camera's choosing 1250. And that I think is a good exposure. And then it's just a matter of trying a couple different compositions, getting it you know, more or less straight or a little bit crooked. I'm also trying to frame out the building on the right side there. It's a little bit in the way. So I might step over a little bit. Yeah, so this is, you know, a very specific scene. Not for everyone, but I like it. And I find that when I'm collecting these kinds of scenes, sometimes I'm rewarded with something really interesting. Like if I hang out here and linger, maybe eventually someone will come out on the stairs and smoke a cigarette or something, and then I can get a photo of that or coming out of this door. So it's just good to be patient and be curious. I find that uh, creativity stems from curiosity and just putting the work in, putting the time in. reflections off cars because the way they really like bend over things in interesting ways. So here I was just exploring this these little back streets away from the main street again lurking around the shadows and looking for the little hidden nooks and crannies. And it just caught my eye how this, you know, metal grate, metal gate, grate, whatever, catches the red lights that are inside there, and there's these little bits of red. And then as I was shooting, I was very lucky, even though I was on a very slow shutter, only a 20th, this uh, cook or chef came down these stairs and popped out. So I got this blurry image of him, and then this cool color in the foreground. 
So again, kind of highlighting that when you go off the main street and explore the, you know, the deeper reaches of an area, you might find kind of unexpected, interesting things as you go. So not the most amazing scene, but I found it, found it pretty interesting, visually interesting. So, you know, from the last scene, just over there off to the side, I realized that there's a bunch of activity in the back of this restaurant. There's chefs coming and going. And I came over here to shoot the staircase from the side, which I think looks pretty cool. And right as I did that, uh, a cook just popped out of that door. Now, maybe fortunately, maybe unfortunately, I was on a 20th of a second. So he's rather motion blurred, but I'm still quite happy with how that shot turned out. So now I'm back on AV and I'm on a 200th, 6400 ISO, because it's quite dark. And I'm just hoping somebody else will go in and out of that door, because I think that'll make for a nice shot without, without the motion blur, you know, freeze the action, but with a lot of additional noise because I'm on 6400 ISO, although it still looks great on 6400. It's not an issue. So here is where patience, it takes some patience. The last time it was almost luck that I got it because I, uh, I was just lining up the shot, you know, that's why I was on the 20th because I didn't think anyone would show up. I was just shooting the static scene because it's cool. And then uh, right at that moment, I could hear somebody coming out. So I took two shots. Probably not going to get a second chance, but we'll give it a minute, see if I can get something. Actually, when cars go by on the street, they light up the scene in a pretty cool way. There we go. Their tail lights are cool too. We'll keep moving. Back to the main streets. You know, simple, simple scene, but got the little construction guy there guarding the construction site. But what drew, what drew me over to this side of the street is this bright lighting here. And I like how, you know, we can create some silhouettes, which uh, we have videos about that on the Rico channel before, we've done that. But uh, I think this is a cool opportunity here. I like how it says tax-free and then kusuri, which means medicine. So let's see, I think, ooh. Timing's gonna be tricky here. Tough to time it. It's a little late on those because it's a very narrow little space. Okay. That's not bad. A little out of focus. So it didn't have the focus actually on the people, the person. I want someone who's gonna pass rather close to the to the wall. Like this guy who's coming. Here we go. Nice. Perfect. That's pretty good. The girl was less interesting because, uh, depending on what people are wearing, their silhouette is more or less like a human silhouette. You know, like, I like to be able to see the shape of the person. So, guys in business suits are, are great. And maybe this dude. There we go. Okay, so now, like in a scene like this, I'm getting kind of the basic gist of it, so I know I want a silhouette. But oh, the overall composition is a little bit, I don't know, messy, simplistic. So now I'm starting to think like, okay, well, how can I, how can I clean this up and make it more interesting? Maybe by incorporating something in the foreground. So first I'm just gonna move around a little bit. Oh, actually, wow, so this is much better because there's this other sign over here that was invisible from that angle, that's nice. And now if I go vertical, uh -huh, now it's much cleaner. And now the camera is like recognizing some uh, face in the background, so I don't want that. So this is an example where face recognition is actually very annoying. I've mentioned this before that you don't always want face recognition. So instead of turning it off, I'm just going to use good old snap focus for five meters. That should be about right. Okay, there we go. Now the tricky part is going to be having a person actually walk through this scene for me because I've gotten closer to it. 
people tend not to like walk between you and the and the passage here. So let's see what we get. There might be someone coming. Oh, here we go. There's the guy there. Ooh, a little close. This one's better. Nice. One more. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ooh, I almost missed it. I got greedy and tried to take two. <laughs> and I should have just gone for one. I think it's important to, uh, to try to nail one rather than trying to get two, you know, not so good. Okay, now I'm noticing one more thing. I think this is gonna be the last piece of the puzzle. I'm gonna get a little lower because I think if people pass in front of me from this angle, their head will line up better with the red circle of the Japan flag over there. It's gonna be like a halo. Also, I'm gonna try a couple horizontal ones real quick. Because I realize if I do horizontal, I could also get our little uh, construction friend in the background there. Okay, he just moved. But in any case, I kind of like that I can see the three signs, the vending machine, and then a little bit of the street scene back there. All right, none of those in the end was perfect. But we tried. I think I got a couple of cool shots in there. I think there's definitely some good stuff. I will probably come back here and try it again. I don't think I'm, you know, I don't think I nailed it. But for tonight, for this video, I think that's it. That's all we're gonna do. So thank you so much for watching. All right, that's all we have for you today from Roppongi, the streets of Roppongi. Of course, please like the video if you liked it. Um, subscribe to this channel. And also, if you have any questions or comments about what we shot today, please put them down in the comments. I will be going through answering any questions that I see and, you know, whatever. I love interacting with you guys. Any ideas, any conversation is great. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.